Well, this was the most satisfying Oscars we've had in a long time. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today, I'm going to be talking about the results of Sunday's 95th Academy Awards and comparing the actual winners to my picks and predictions. If you haven't already watched my Oscar prediction video, you can check it out here to see not only my personal picks and predictions for all 23 categories, but also my reasoning for those predictions. You can also check out my Oscar category ranking series to see my full rankings for all the nominees in all 23 categories. In this video, we're going to go through all 23 of those categories, and for each, I'm going to tell you the nominees, remind you of my personal pick, recap who I thought would win, and then briefly talk about the actual winner. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. Remember, these are just my thoughts, so be sure to post your own personal thoughts on the 2023 Oscars in the comments below. I've already reviewed some of these movies on this channel, so if you want to check those out for some more in-depth thoughts on each of them, I'll put links in the description below and also link some of them up in the cards as we go along. I'll be going through these in the order in which they were presented, but I'll put timestamps in the description to make it a bit easier to navigate. Alright, let's talk about these results. Animated Feature Film. The nominees were Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, The Sea Beast, and Turning Red. My personal pick was Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, but I thought Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio would actually win. And the Oscar went to Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Okay, so this one wasn't really that big of a surprise, but it was a great way to kick off the awards. Not only was this movie more than deserving of the award, with its fantastic stop-motion animation and darkly uplifting retelling of a classic fairy tale, but it also helped to make Oscar history. Guillermo del Toro is now the first person to win an Oscar for Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Animated Feature Film. If anyone's qualified to champion the fact that animation is cinema, it's him. Actor in a Supporting Role. The nominees were Brendan Gleeson in The Banshees of Anna Sharon, Brian Tyree Henry in Causeway, Judd Hirsch in The Fablemans, Barry Keoghan in The Banshees of Anna Sharon, and Ki Hui Kwan in Everything Everywhere All at Once. My personal pick was Ki Hui Kwan, and I also thought he would actually win. And the Oscar went to Ki Hui Kwan in Everything Everywhere All at Once. Another extremely exciting win early on in the night, and the first of quite a few that literally had me jumping up and down in my living room. He was technically the favorite going into tonight, so I guess we can't say this was a surprise, but still. He came back to acting after 30 years, and won for a role in a movie as weird and wild as Everything Everywhere All at Once. And he's just so genuine and wholesome and happy to be there that you can't not be excited for him. Plus, he gave one of the best acceptance speeches of the night. Actress in a supporting role. The nominees were Angela Bassett in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Hong Chow in The Whale, Carrie Condon in The Banshees of Inna Sharon, Jamie Lee Curtis in Everything Everywhere All at Once, and Stephanie Hsu in Everything Everywhere All at Once. My personal pick was Stephanie Hsu, but I thought Carrie Condon would actually win. And the Oscar went to Jamie Lee Curtis in Everything Everywhere All at Once. So after two awards that were not surprises at all, we get Jamie Lee Curtis. I know she won at the SAG Awards this year, but this win still felt like it came completely out of the blue. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed her performance, but it just didn't seem Oscar-worthy to me, especially when compared with some of the other nominees. I suspect there's a bit of an underlying legacy lifetime achievement sort of thing going on here, since this was actually her first Oscar nomination ever, which in itself is kind of surprising. So my first incorrect prediction of the night, but I'm still happy we can now say Oscar winner Jamie Lee Curtis. Documentary Feature. The nominees were all That Breathes, All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, Fire of Love, A House Made of Splinters, and Navalny. My personal pick was Navalny, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to Navalny. 
So even though this was my personal pick and the one that I went with for my prediction, I wasn't super confident that it was going to be the winner. There were a few of these nominees that seemed like they were going to be the front runner at various points in the lead up to the Oscars, so I think it really could have gone a couple different ways. However, I do also think that the best documentary won. Live action short film. The nominees were An Irish Goodbye, Eva Lou, Les Pupilles, Night Ride, and The Red Suitcase. My personal pick was The Red Suitcase, but I thought An Irish Goodbye would actually win. And the Oscar went to An Irish Goodbye. I tend to not do great with my short film predictions for some reason, but I got this one right this year. It was my second favorite of the nominees, so I'm certainly not unhappy with its win. I mean, we got to hear all sorts of actors and filmmakers sing happy birthday because of it. I will say, though, that given the style similarities, I think it's interesting that this won in a year when the Banshees of Inisherin got nothing. Cinematography. The nominees were All Quiet on the Western Front, Bardo, False Chronicle of a Handful of Truths, Elvis, Empire of Light, and Tar. My personal pick was All Quiet on the Western Front, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to All Quiet on the Western Front. So it seems like a lot of people were very surprised by this win, which frankly surprises me because it seemed like the only obvious choice. But apparently this wasn't as obvious a pick as I thought it was. This film didn't have the stylistic flair of say 1917, which itself was ironically DP'd by fellow nominee Roger Deakins, but I still thought it did an excellent job of putting you right in the action and heartbreaking devastation of its story. Makeup and hairstyling. The nominees were All Quiet on the Western Front, The Batman, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis, and The Whale. My personal pick was Elvis, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to The Whale. So this was the second big upset of the night, and maybe even more surprising than Jamie Lee Curtis's supporting actress win. I will say that from the technical standpoint of this category, I think The Whale was deserving of recognition, and quite possibly deserving of the Oscar. Of the nominees, it was my second choice, and was my personal frontrunner until really only a month or so before I put my final ranking together. The transformative prosthetics here were not only impressive, but also essential for the story, and we never lost Brendan Fraser or his empathetic performance within them. I just thought for sure that the general backlash this film's received, especially with regard to its prosthetics, would have really knocked this one out of contention. Costume design. The nominees were Babylon, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. My personal pick was Elvis, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Another double miss for me, though it seems like a lot of people weren't quite as surprised by this win as I was. I definitely think the costumes were impressive, so I'm not disparaging them at all. I just didn't think they were as good as three of the other nominees. And given Angela Bassett's loss in Supporting Actress, it seemed like the voters weren't really on the Black Panther train, but they sure love the costumes, and Ruth Carter picked up her second Oscar for a second Black Panther movie. International Feature Film the nominees were All Quiet on the Western Front, Argentina 1985, Close, EO, and The Quiet Girl. My personal pick was All Quiet on the Western Front, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to All Quiet on the Western Front. So I thought nearly all of the nominees were really strong this year, but this was one of the least surprising categories of the night. All Quiet picking up some of the technical categories may have been a bit shocking to some people, but really, I don't think anybody thought any other film would win in this category. At least with the nominees we ended up getting. I said it before in my prediction video, but I think this would have been a very different race if both RRR and Decisional Leap had made it in as nominees. Documentary Short Subject. The nominees were The Elephant Whisperers, Haul Out, How Do You Measure a Year, the Martha Mitchell Effect, and Stranger at the Gate. My personal pick was The Martha Mitchell Effect, but I thought The Elephant Whisperers would actually win. And the Oscar went to The Elephant Whisperers. 
Okay, so just like with the live action short category, this wasn't my personal favorite of the bunch, but it was the one that I thought would actually win. Though I have to say, of the shorts categories, this was the prediction I was least confident in. I was concerned that the misguided stranger at the gate might sneak in, and I suspect it was probably a pretty close second, but Baby Elephants won out. Animated short film. The nominees were The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse, The Flying Sailor, Ice Merchants, My Year of Dicks, and An Ostrich Told Me the World is Fake and I Think I Believe It. My personal pick was An Ostrich Told Me the World is Fake and I Think I Believe It, but I thought The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse would actually win. And the Oscar went to The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. I think this is actually the first time I've correctly predicted all three of the shorts categories. Though, unsurprisingly, to me, none of the winners were my personal first choices. The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse had some really nice animation, and it was sweet, but the constant, heavy-handed, life-lesson, positivity-pushing story really irritated me after a while. But that's probably because I'm not a particularly positive person, so I figured this would actually be a fan favorite, and one that most people, who aren't me, would really enjoy. Production Design The nominees were All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of Water, Babylon, Elvis, and The Fablemans. My personal pick was Babylon, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to All Quiet on the Western Front. So another double miss for me, and another technical category that went in a very surprising direction. Don't get me wrong, I thought All Quiet had really strong production design and set decoration. I just thought it was comparatively a bit limited, given its primarily battlefield settings. There was, however, a lot of really strong period authenticity, so I can't say that this was a bad win, just a very, very surprising one. Original score. The nominees were All Quiet on the Western Front, Babylon, The Banshees of Anna Sharon, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and The Fablemans. My personal pick was Babylon, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to All Quiet on the Western Front. So I think this was the point in the night that a lot of people were starting to get a little nervous watching All Quiet take all these tech categories. Now, I do want to say that I thought all five nominees were very strong for very different reasons, and All Quiet was my second choice. But even now, I just find it so hard to believe that Babylon lost this one. This was its best shot at an Oscar, and it was so energetic and catchy, but the tense, immersive All Quiet score won out in the end. Visual Effects. The nominees were All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of Water, The Batman, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and Top Gun Maverick. My personal pick was Avatar, The Way of Water, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to Avatar, The Way of Water. It also won the award for most unsurprising win of the night. The other four nominees all had some nice visual effects, but really, this was no contest. Now, if only the winners were actually given time to give their acceptance speeches. Oh, we have to make a CGI Fridays joke instead? Well, in that case, original screenplay. The nominees were The Banshees of Inna Sharon, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, and Triangle of Sadness. My personal pick was Everything Everywhere All at Once, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to Everything Everywhere All at Once. This was a category that I personally thought was a very tough choice, and one that I also thought would be extremely close when it came to actual voting. I'd be super curious to see what the second most voted for nominee was, and what the margin between Everything Everywhere and that film was, but I do think that the best nominee won here. This movie is weird and wild and complex, but still easy to follow. It's unlike anything else that's out there, which really is the definition of an original screenplay. Adapted Screenplay. The nominees were All Quiet on the Western Front, Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery, Living, Top Gun Maverick, and Women Talking. My personal pick was All Quiet on the Western Front, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to Women Talking. A double miss for me, but a double miss that I am happy to take. 
I thought for sure that All Quiet was gonna get it, not only for being an adaptation of such a well-regarded novel, but also for following in the footsteps of another Oscar-nominated and Best Picture winning adaptation of that novel. But Sarah Polly and Women Talking get the Oscar instead, and I think it's very well deserved. I mean, if you go back and watch my review of Women Talking from last year, the very first thing I mention in the prose section of the review is the script. It retains a very literary feel throughout, and even though it wasn't my favorite, and it wasn't the one I thought would win, I'm extremely happy that it did. Sound. The nominees were All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of Water, The Batman, Elvis, and Top Gun Maverick. My personal pick was Top Gun Maverick, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to Top Gun Maverick. So this category is always a little hard to judge now, ever since the consolidation of sound editing and sound mixing into just sound. I think it loses a little nuance, and so the more bombastic nominees have a bit of a leg up. So even though we had a music biopic in the mix, I knew it was going to go to one of the two war films. I felt pretty confident about Top Gun going in, but I gotta say, as All Quiet was racking up those tech Oscars, I was starting to think it might take sound too. But Top Gun Maverick got it, coming away with its lone Oscar. Original Song. The nominees were Applause from Tell It Like a Woman, Hold My Hand from Top Gun Maverick, Lift Me Up from Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Natu Natu from RRR, and This Is a Life from Everything Everywhere All at Once. My personal pick was Natu Natu, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to Natu Natu. I am very happy about this one. I'm not a huge pop fan, so most of the other nominees were kind of just okay to me, but Natu Natu definitely brought a different sound than we're used to at the Oscars. I think it technically was the front runner headed into the ceremony, but I was still nervous for it. However, the standing ovation for the Natu Natu performance halfway through the night made me feel a little bit better, and it was clearly the fan and voter favorite. I'm really glad RRR came away with an Oscar, because it definitely deserved to be up for more categories than it actually was. Film Editing. The nominees were The Banshees of Anna Sharon, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Tar, and Top Gun Maverick. My personal pick was Everything Everywhere All at Once, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to Everything Everywhere All at Once. This was another category that I felt really confident about going into the ceremony. And unlike a couple other categories, I never doubted it as the night progressed. This was the only one of the nominees that on first watch, the editing jumped out at me as particularly strong. And it's one that I appreciate the editing even more every time I rewatch it. It manages to take a chaotic multiverse story and frame it in a way that not only makes sense, but fluidly and creatively flows. Directing. The nominees were Martin McDonough for The Banshees of Inna Sharon, The Daniels for Everything Everywhere All at Once, Steven Spielberg for The Fablemans, Todd Field for Tar, and Ruben Ostland for Triangle of Sadness. My personal pick was The Daniels, and I also thought they would actually win. And the Oscar went to The Daniels for Everything Everywhere All at Once. This was another double win for me, but I will say that directing was a category that I thought could realistically go a couple different ways. I really thought The Banshees of Inna Sharon was going to get a bit more Oscar love than it did or really any Oscar love, but as the night went on, it was clear that that wasn't going to be the case. It was also clear that despite quite a few nominations, The Fablemans was also going to go home empty-handed, but this was another well-deserved win for Everything Everywhere. Actor in a leading role. The nominees were Austin Butler in Elvis, Colin Farrell in The Banshees of Inna Sharon, Brendan Fraser in The Whale, Paul Meskel in After Sun, and Bill Nye in Living. My personal pick was Brendan Fraser, and I also thought he would actually win. And the Oscar went to Brendan Fraser. So this was easily the most anxiety-inducing category of the night for me. I wanted Brendan Fraser to win so bad, and I was genuinely nervous. So I was standing and kind of pacing around in the lead up to the announcement for this category. And much like with Kiwi Kwan's win, I couldn't help but jump around when Brendan won. Going into the night, I really thought this could go to either Butler or Fraser, 
But as Elvis lost category after category, I was starting to think a Fraser win was a strong possibility. Even now, I'm still very excited about this win. I'm so happy for Brendan Fraser. Actress in a leading role. The nominees were Kate Blanchett in Tar, Anna de Armas in Blonde, Andrea Riseborough in Two Leslie, Michelle Williams in The Fablemans, and Michelle Yeoh in Everything Everywhere All at Once. My personal pick was Michelle Yeoh, and I also thought she would actually win. And the Oscar went to Michelle Yeoh. Well, I had two jump up and down in celebration categories in a row. Just like with Best Actor, I thought this category was basically a two-way race, and that it had just about equal potential to go to either Yo or Blanchett. And while I wouldn't have been unhappy with another Kate Blanchett Oscar win, I am thrilled that Michelle Yeoh got her first Oscar. And for a role like this, some more Oscar history right here. Best Picture. The nominees were All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of Water, The Banshees of Inna Sharon, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, and Women Talking. My personal pick was Everything Everywhere All at Once, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to Everything Everywhere All at Once. Well, this is certainly my favorite Best Picture winner of the decade so far. It doesn't happen often for me, but there's just something extra exciting when your favorite film of the year wins the top award. I felt pretty confident about this prediction going into the night, and that confidence only grew with each of the film's six preceding Oscar wins. There were a lot of other great nominees this year, but once again, I think this was a very well-deserved win for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Alright, so there you have it, my reaction to the results of the 95th Academy Awards. I correctly predicted 17 out of 23 winners, and 13 of my 23 personal picks actually won. Usually the combined total gives me a bit of a boost, but all of my correct personal picks were also ones I predicted to win, so I correctly picked or predicted a combined 17 of 23. So this was actually a pretty decent year for predictions, and even my personal picks saw an improvement. Compared to last year, I had two more correct predictions this time around, 17 instead of 15, which is actually a new record for me. I did a bit better with my personal picks too, getting 13 compared to last year's 8, and my combo picks stayed the same at 17. So overall, I'd say this was an improvement for me compared to last year. Probably didn't hurt that I generally liked the nominees quite a bit more than last year too. So how did you do with your predictions? I'd love to see your thoughts on the Oscar results and also your prediction percentage, so be sure to post them in the comments below. Remember, I've already ranked all the nominees from all 23 categories, and I've also reviewed some of these movies, so I've put links to those videos in the description below. And you could check those out if you want some more in-depth discussion of each, as well as my ratings, pros and cons, and even tailored film recommendations. And if you're interested in buying any of these Oscar nominated or winning movies, I do have affiliate links to all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. Alright, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information out of this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe if you're at it to see more videos like this, as well as movie reviews. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with mainly movies, the way life should be.